Hi, my name is Avidia and this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel to learn board games quickly and easily. Today, thanks to my friend Mike, I'm going to teach you and give you some tips on how to play Settlers of Catan Cities and Nights. An expansion that makes Catan feel supercharged. What's fun in Cities and Nights is how it's still very much a Catan game, but it adds more depth and variety to the game. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Before we start, if you're not familiar with Catan, you should watch our video where I explain the rules of the base game because you will need it for Cities and Knights. In Cities and Knights, you still play a settler in the island of Catan, but now the Catanians have a more complex society. In addition to your settlements, roads and cities, you can now build walls for your cities. You can produce knights, the robber has evolved and is now working in concert with barbarians, and in addition to resources, you can also produce commodities. In Cities and Knights, you will also build metropolises, you will also attract a merchant, and you will fight off barbarian invasions until your territory is the most glorious. You will compete against fellow settlers until the first player reaches 13 victory points and is declared the winner. Before we set up the game, let's look at the new components of the game in more detail. The first thing you'll notice are the new cards. In addition to the five resources, you now have three commodities. Think of them as refined resources which are produced in your cities. Only pastures, forests and mountains produce commodities. Now refined wool gives cloth, refined lumber gives paper and refined ore gives coins. In most ways they work exactly like resources when produced, counting in your hand limit, spent or trading them. The difference is that they can only be produced in your cities, not your settlements. When your city produces bricks or wheat, you take two of them as in the base game. But for those, you take one resource and one commodity. You do not take two lumber, ore or wool anymore. You will use these new commodities to buy city improvements. That's a big difference in this expansion. There are three ways to improve your cities. You can use cloth to improve trade, coins to improve politics, or paper to improve science. Improving one of these will help you get progress cards, special abilities, and a metropolis. The science track will help get cheaper or free city upgrades, improve your production, collect more resources or gain knights, roads or points. The trade track will help you make better trades or steal resources or commodities. With the politics track, you can move robbers, knights and even roads, steal cards or resources or score one extra point. Each player keeps track of its city's progress using this development flip chart. The first level costs only one commodity and there are five levels in each of the three areas of improvement. Each new step costs one more commodity to acquire. So for instance, a level four improvement in science would cost four paper. All these are shown on the bottom right hand side of the improvement. Remember that if you don't have a city anymore, you cannot build city improvements anymore and the same applies for the walls. They are represented by these square tokens and you can place one under a city once you buy it. Each wall allows you to keep two more cards in your hand before getting robbed. So one city wall allows for nine cards, two for 11, and all three walls allow up to 13 cards safe in your hand when a seven is rolled during production. Keep in mind that you can only build one city wall per city and you cannot build walls under settlements. Another new component are the knights. They're represented by these wooden tokens and can be flipped either on the active or the inactive side. Now they come in three levels, the basic, strong and mighty shown by their type of shield and the number of rings around the token. The more rings, the stronger the knight. Now walls and knights can be bought like anything else in Catan. The cost is mentioned on the flip chart. Pay two bricks for one wall and place the wall under a city. Now pay one wall and one ore for a knight and place it at the intersection of one of your roads. They can be placed one space from your buildings and they are placed with the inactive side up. It's also one wall and one ore to promote a knight from basic to strong. You pay the same cost to promote from a strong to a mighty knight, but you need the fortress before you can do that. To upgrade a knight, simply exchange the tokens so you can buy more later. And finally, we have the barbarians. Place the barbarian on the starting position of the barbarian board. The barbarians are a constant threat to Catan. They come to pillage its cities and your city will become a settlement. Now, barbarians do not attack settlements, only cities. Now, to set up the game, start by building the island, just like in a standard Catan game. Now, for your first few games, I'd suggest you have a look at the rules and you follow what's shown here. 
Do not use the base game development cards, instead we're going to use the three decks of progress cards that come with Cities and Knights. Place the decks on the side of the board. The progress cards are not purchased like in Catan, they are won as you further develop your cities. To start the game, in the Catan base game you usually put two settlements. Now in Cities and Knights you're going to place one settlement and one city. The first player places his first settlement and every player continues in clockwise order after that. Now the last player also places his city and collects the resources surrounding it. Then every player does the same in counterclockwise order so that the first player places last. Keep the three metropolises and the merchant token close by, you might need them later on. The metropolis are these yellow gates. There are three of them and you can get each of them by upgrading to the level four of each one of the three development tracks. The first player to reach that level takes a metropolis and places it on top of a city. The metropolis adds two points to a city for a total of four points. Also, place a metropolis token on the flip chart to show if it's a science, trade or politics metropolis. You can take another player's metropolis if you reach the fifth level of that track before them. A metropolis still counts towards the strength of the barbarians, but it cannot be reduced to a settlement. Now, as for the merchant, you will receive the merchant when you play one of the six merchant trade progress cards. Place the merchant on a land hex adjacent to one of your cities or settlements. Until another merchant card is played, you can trade that resource as if it was a two to one harbor. This does not apply to commodities. The gameplay is very similar to Catan with a few exceptions. Now, the first big change is you'll notice now there is a third die to roll. Now, this third die will determine what event happens during the turn. If you roll the ship symbol, move the barbarians one step closer to the island of Catan. If the barbarians reach the last space, the red circle, they attack Catan. At this point, you compare the strength of the barbarians with the combined strength of Catan. The strength of the barbarians is the number of cities on Catan. The strength of Catan is the number of knights active on Catan. Basic knights count for one, strong knights for two, and mighty for three. At this stage, there are two outcomes. If the knights have a strength equal or greater than the barbarians, they win, and Catan is saved for the time being. The player who has the most combined strength of active knights, not the number of knights, receives the Defender of Catan victory point card and places it face up in front of him. In case of a tie, no player is declared the Defender of Catan. Instead, all players, in clockwise order, draw a progress card from the stack of their choice. The other option is if the Barbarians have a greater strength than the Knights, they will be victorious and they will pillage one or more cities. A player who does not contribute any knight is automatically targeted. In this case, the player who contributed the least to the total strength of the knights will demote one of its cities to a settlement. Players who do not have any cities are not affected by this. In case of a tie, all these players reduce one city to a settlement. Remember that if that city has walls, it loses the walls as the city gets destroyed, and you also lose the extra two cards protected in your hand limit. Regardless of the outcome of the fight, all knights are flipped to their inactive side and the barbarians will begin a new journey towards Catan. Now, if you roll one of the three city gate symbols, it's a lot less dramatic and players stand a chance to win one of the progress cards. Depending on the progress they have made on their flip chart, the players look at the color of the city symbol and the result of the red die. If the dice match those indicated on the chart, all players who have reached the fourth step and above pick the card from the respective progress deck in clockwise order, starting from the first player. Finally, the yellow and red dice are added and they work like normal Catan resource dice. Now while the robber is placed on the desert at the beginning of the game, it doesn't become active until the first attack of the barbarians. After that, it works like a normal robber, allowing the active player to take one random card from another player. It could be a commodity. Rolling a 7 will still affect the player's hand limit, whether the robber is active or not. Then you can trade. Note that in Cities and Knights, there's no order like in Catan. You're allowed to trade, build, trade in any order you want. Another point of difference is that you can play as many progress cards as you want in your turn. Just remember that you cannot have more than 4 progress cards in your hand. Any victory card you have in front of you does not count in your hand limit. There are some rules that would be best described by showing you how they would be played. Let's start with the special ability players get once they reach the third level of development on the progress chart. The trading house on the yellow trade track allows the player to trade two cards of the same commodity for one resource or commodity of his choice during his turn. 
The fortress on the blue politics track enables to promote knights from strong to mighty. You still pay the cost. Finally, you have the aqueduct on the green science track. When the player does not receive a resource, even if it's because of the robber, the player can take any one resource from the bank in that turn. Another great thing about the knights, apart from protecting from the barbarians, is that they can perform one of three actions during your turn. The first is to move the knight. If you want to build a settlement where you have a knight, you need to move it first. If you cannot move it, you cannot build. Now you can move your knight to another intersection on the same road. The intersection needs to be free as you cannot have more than one knight per intersection. You can jump over your knights to get there. Once you are done, flip your knight to the inactive side. Note that you can move your knight to cut someone's longest road, not just to build a settlement. The second action you can take is displacing another player's knight. On your turn, you can place one of your knights on a weaker knight. For instance, your mighty knight can displace this strong knight. The red player must move his strong knight to an empty space on his road. But if that knight was active, it stays active. The player who displaced that knight is now inactive. If there's no empty space on that road, the knight is taken back to the supply. You cannot displace your own knights. The third action is to use your knight to chase away the robber. If the robber is on a land hex adjacent to one of your active knights, you can use that knight to move the robber. Any strength of knight can do this. This works like a knight card in the Catan base game. You move the robber to someone else's land hex and randomly take one of their resource or commodity cards. The knight gets deactivated. Moving the robber with your knight is a game variant. You can choose not to play it. There are two more game variants I want to show you, a nastier one and an easier one. The easier version, re-roll all sevens during the first two rounds of the game so that every turn players can produce resources. To make it even easier, do not roll the event die during the first two rounds. In the nastier rules, the players decide whether the active knights contribute towards the fight with the barbarians or not. Starting from the active player and in clockwise order, each player announces the knights he contributes to the fight. Only the knights committed to the battle count in the strength of Catan and are taken into account to determine the weakest player who will have his city pillaged. As we've just seen, remember that if you've already lost your last city, you do not suffer more damages from the barbarians. I guess they take pity. You also do not lose the progress you made on the flip chart. However, you will need to build a new city before you can go further up the progress chart. One last thing to remember with the knights is that you cannot activate the knight and then play the knight in the same turn. However, you can play the knight and reactivate the knight in the same turn. When I want to play scenarios with cities and knights, I add the Seafarer's expansion and play scenarios like Through the Desert. You can check out the scenarios on my Seafarer's video. When you play with these maps, you take all the cities and all the knights, active knights, in play when the barbarians attack and when there's a knight on a shipping route it's considered closed my tips to win a Catan cities and knights are start by watching my tips on the Catan video they all apply here at the beginning of the game try to focus on one track at least until you get to level three before moving to other tracks it's really important to keep up with the other players on the level of knights even though you can't lose any more cities once you don't have any it's a very painful place to be in so try to avoid it at all costs Make sure you get progress cards as often as possible. They help a lot. Remember that you will need a second city before you can get to the fourth level of another track to build a metropolis. As soon as a player reaches 13 points, the game ends. Remember that the largest army does not play in this game. And as in the Catan base game, there can never be a tie. That's how you play Catan Cities and Knights expansion. It's a great Catan game that gets more challenging as you play the more complex variants. It plays well at three to four players, but the five and six player games can be epic. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you would like me to teach. I'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.